this is the casting we got tacked up last week. I feed it out all the way through with a rotary burr right down, loads of penetration all the way around. It's stuck together now in basically three places that side, that side, and there. And I'm going to fasten it back together. I've got some silk and bronze TIG wire. I'm actually going to weld this on ESC. I'll show the settings once I've got it welded and I'll show how I set the machine up. I'm going to try and get some decent arc shots on it. I'll give it a go and see what happens. Idea to do with it now, and then we'll turn it around and do some on the other side. Try and spread it all out so we can get all the we should in one particular place. One actually melting the base metal, you're just getting it hot, getting it wet, and then feeding the bronze in. Once it's welded, that's it. You're doing go back over it and make it look pretty. Once it's done, it's basically done.
be the first to admit it's not the prettiest well I've ever done but it's welded quite nicely or at least it's braced quite nicely the temptation is to get the torch and go across it and smooth it out like you often do with aluminium you don't do that with cast iron because they're just going to put more heat into the job and you're going to risk it cracking it certainly was veyed out it worked plenty of penetration that would be a good repair I'm going to cover it up now and let it cool down nice and slowly overnight ideally it should be in in the vermiculite, that's a big word. Anyway, we'll let it cool down and hopefully that'll be a good repair. This is the set I used to weld it with. It's an Artec 260 AXT TIG welder with a, a water cooler. The settings I use, I'll go through the basic settings. Start at the beginning. Pre-flow, there's no pre-flow organ because I'm using the foot pedal. Start amps 25 amps, that gives a nice clean start. No upslope because I'm using a pedal. Welding amps I've set at 130. ESA balance, I've got the ESA balance set at 7%. That gives a nice clean weld. A clean action is ideal for cast iron. On aluminium you normally run 30%. Frequency 82 hertz, I've played wrong with it. Uh, 80 hertz is pretty good for the sort of welding I was doing. No down slope, end amps at 5. Post flow, that's gas that comes out after you finish welding. I've got that set at 8 seconds. That just helps to keep the, the weld clean and cools the tungsten off to stop it oxidising. This is set in memory 6 because the machine's got 10 memories and I know that this one works quite well for silicon bronze on cast iron. And the amount of parameters that you can change on the welder to finely tune it in, um, there's a lot, a lot to learn. But basically, we are stuck it together. Not bad for a mechanic, it pisses about. That's the rod I used to repair it with, 2.4mm diameter, Foster Bronze TIG rod. That's all the spec on it there. These were kind of supplied to me by Artec Welding. Right, this time we'll have a look in the bottom drawer, see what treasures might lie in there. There was a clock gauge in here, uh, my friend Bob took it away to sort it out for us because it was in a bit of a, a poor state, but it is a nice gauge. Right, first item, obviously a whole meal handle for a little needle file. Chuck key, another chuck key, another chuck key. Yet another one. Old Vernia. Can't see a name on it. Looks like a piece of silver steel rod. A smooth and blunt half round fail. It's a nice little depth gauge that looks homemade. That old Nelly certainly is homemade. That's a nice little item. Another little needle fail. Mill and cutter that's in reasonable condition. It's been Hammered with like a, a whole made chisel, nice and sharp chisel or a wedge. Piece of silver steel that's had the ends ground for some reason, not quite sure what. Nice little parallel punch. Clamp, who were made. Little scrap I made from a old half round file. Some more needle files. These are nice and sharp as well. A 
that looks like it's part of a part of a clock gauge adapter of some description or a scraper a piece of steel with a hole drill in it pencil Let that punch, let that itch. Another piece of silver steel. Fail. Piece of hexy ball with a hole through it. Possibly a tail cutter, it's actually got a ceramic. Possibly a tail cutter, it's actually got a piece of tool steel sitting at the end of it. Milling cutter, six inch rule, can't see a name on it, oh there it is, Chesterman, Sheffield, <coughs> the same bar, I'll possibly do a video Showing how that's used, that's quite nice, it's in good condition, it wants a little bit of clean up and some oil put on it. It's something that I haven't got, it's something I've been meaning to buy or make, but now I've, I've got quite a nice one and I would say that was well made as well. Another file, yet another one. <coughs> I'm not sure what that is. Not sure at all. If anybody knows what it is, it'll be interesting to find out. And a couple of little hooks. That's a, a wheel for mounting a, a fibre or a, a sandpaper drum on it. A little spanner. A cap head bolt, which would appear to be a ONF. That's basically it. Junior hacksaw blade. Somebody did say that I must look underneath the drawers for any writing or anything or <laughs> any money tape there. And he has nothing on the bottom of that one. I hope you enjoyed that draw opening. I'll probably do another one next week. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as usual, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in. Thanks for watching. That bastard here. Yeah. Yeah, me.